，千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to extend a warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware, as we all ready ourselves for this sacred process in the Tao with one another. So I want to start with the wheel, and I want to start with the message from Lao Tzu. The spokes support the shape of the wheel. The hole in the center lets it roll. That's what Lao Tzu. That's the main point Lao Tzu was trying to make with that first example. Now, I want to ask everyone to have. To assume the state of mental agility in extending from that, and look into real life to think about what else is necessary. Lubricant lets the wheel spin freely. Horses provide speed and stamina for the trip. Let me explain why I bring those up. So these are not mentioned in the chapter at all. However, when we reflect upon it and then think about the real, real world counterpart to what Lao Tzu is saying, then, of course, we know that lubricating oil can be important to a wheel. It makes the turning of the wheel a lot smoother, without squeaky noises, and that turns out to be an idea that we can、uh, apply to life too. Another important point to make is that a wheel is insufficient by itself. So it isn't just a carriage that can function with a single wheel. That wheel has to work in conjunction with other wheels. This can be further expanded as a way to say that last time. We apply the wheel as metaphoric analogies to different things in life, such as the ruler of a kingdom having ministers and advisors that are like the spokes. Now, going further from that, the ruler of a kingdom, the kingdom itself as a wheel, that kingdom must form alliances with other kingdoms, perhaps neighboring kingdoms. For positive, good relationships, commerce, mutual benefit, and protection. Now, going even a little bit further, another step further, the wheels by themselves are also insufficient for the functioning of a carriage or chariot. They need to be pulled or driven, either by animal muscle power, like the horse-drawn carriages. In the time of Lao Tzu, or the various kinds of engines that we use in modern times, were also driving, powering, and moving the wheels just in different ways. When you have all the pieces together that you need, then you get to the functionality that Lao Tzu was talking about. So Lao Tzu says the functionality. Is dependent on the hole in the hub, and we can see if we think about it that it is also dependent on the these other elements. They may not 
The lubricant may not be absolutely necessary, but it certainly comes in handy. And we know that the 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 horse, the horses, uh, oxen will be absolutely necessary. And when those pieces are in place, the chariot moves across the land, transporting people or goods quickly and efficiently. Now, we can do the exact same thing with the other two examples as well. So let's talk about the container. So what Lao Tzu says is that, well, the substance or the material gives the container its shape, shape and size. The emptiness in the middle gives it capacity to hold things, to contain things. So again, we can think about a real world scenario when we're actually using containers or vessels, and we can see that there are other elements that become necessary or are usually used together, just like the wheel. There's more that goes into the making and using of containers beyond just the shape and size. So like a lid for the container, it can provide protection for the contents of the container, maybe prevent spillage. If the container has handles on it, we can carry it around more easily. Furthermore, just like a single wheel is not necessarily sufficient by itself, we have also seen how in real life, containers are often used in conjunction with other containers or in conjunction with utensils for full functionality. In a meal, you can expect not just a bowl of rice, but perhaps dishes containing entrees. When all of the elements are working together properly, the cup holds water to slay thirst. In that scenario of consuming uh, drinking water and consuming food, the bowl holds food to satisfy appetite and hunger. The bowl keeps the food warm and the cup, the teacup keeps the tea hot and so on. So this is, as you can see, this is corresponding to the different considerations that we put into the first example. Can we do the same for the third example, which is the room? Here's the room. So first, what does Lao Tzu say about the room? Well, the point that Lao Tzu made was that the walls define the dimensions of the room and giving it that space within. But then also, the windows and doors provide light, illumination, and access to go in and out. So that's important too. Now, we can do the same thing as the previous two examples, and we can think about what are the elements will be necessary in a real life scenario. So first, we know that we cannot do a whole lot with the room if it is bare. A completely empty room is not a useful room, so we have to furnish it. And once you have something in it, you may want window covering, you may want locks to provide privacy, to control access, and the furniture provide a setting for productivity, it's not just for aesthetics, but for practical reasons. Likely, in the room, we're going to want something like chairs, table, or desk, just for starters. So the room does not exist on its own. There has to be more to make it useful as a room. And when we have all that, when we have the elements together, then we get optimal functionality.
The room will let you work in peace and quiet, or when you're taking a break, it will let you rest in comfort. Now, all of this is leading up to life applications. So the bottom row is about you, how we can draw from the top three examples to think about life. So some of this we have already done. And one obvious thing is that when we're talking about substance and emptiness, existence and emptiness, with us, with our life, our existence in this world, we know that we have this physical body. It allows us to exist in this world, to interact with other people and the myriad of things that are in it. So the substance is important. The body is important. We need it. Now, humility is what we used emptiness as a metaphor for the heart being empty of arrogance or self-centric notions. That humility provides you with the room, the receptivity, the ability to learn. So right off the bat, we can take that as the as mapping from the previous three examples to life itself. So what about the real world? So we know the spokes of the wheel for us would be like friends and family. They provide us with the support that we need. And then, as I mentioned, humility is the heart free of self-centric notions that is receptive. But what else is there? In this world of ours, it's not just your family and friends. It's the teeming throngs of humanity, sentient beings. There are so many people out there, more people than we can possibly get to know individually. Now, what do we do with these people? If we cannot get to know them, well, for one thing, we can observe them. We can learn from their experience. If someone is doing something right, we can learn from that. And we can endeavor to do, to do things the same way so that we can achieve the positive results that they have. Conversely, we can also observe when people have done something not so great and ended up with a poor result or sometimes no result. We can learn from that and learn to avoid doing the same thing or learn to do things differently so we don't repeat their mistakes. So that's what I mean here by saying that people provide assistance or cautionary examples. And it's not just people that are sources of learning. We can alternatively turn to books that record knowledge and wisdom, people perhaps who have long passed but leaving their thoughts behind for us to learn from. Now, there's more. If you look back up in this column to the top three examples, you can draw all kinds of conclusions from what Lao Tzu implied, although he did not say specifically. So for instance, lubrication. We know wheels benefit from lubricants. In our lives, it is the politeness, courtesy, and considerations in our interactions with others that act as social lubricants. They definitely reduce friction. They reduce the squeaky noises. They ease our interactions with others. So what about the lid, the cover for container? What about the cover for windows for privacy, locks to lock up a room 
these can all be extended as well. Privacy and protection mean sometimes in life you do need to keep things to yourself or work on things on your own. There are things for which we collaborate with others, but then there are certain lessons that are completely up to us to internalize for ourselves. You have seen this to be the case. I think everyone has had that experience. So when all the pieces are working together correctly in life, we end up with optimal functionality in this lifetime. And that just means you are able to absorb the lessons that you are here to learn. And these lessons over the continuing development of your spiritual refinement. Now, looking further up, you can also see additional correspondence between the examples in your life. For instance, the horses that pull the chariot, they correspond to the drive or aspiration within you. What I mean by that is this is the moment when you sense there's more to your life than what you have explored so far. You are feeling that, well, there's got to be more to it. There is an inner need, perhaps, to fully express your potential. Like, I haven't really done all I can or used all I can. I, I've got more that I can tap into. And because of that, you aspire to become a better person. That becomes your internal engine of spiritual evolution. So that would be matching the powerful horses that pull or draw the chariots, moving them across the landscape. Okay, so now to go a little bit further, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing the vertical part of it by starting with benefits and functionality. So starting with the benefits, first, I want to bring in the examples used by Lao Tzu. And as a reminder for all of us, I want to bring in the yin and yang symbol. And then I want to compare this with the functionality. So first, remember that having these things, for these things to have physical manifestation, material substance, that is the yang side. So it's on the left hand side of the slide. The right hand side is a functionality of it. And let's go through them one by one. For the wheel, we know the use of a wheel is to rotate so the carriage can move and serve the purpose of transportation. That is the functionality. It's good, it's beneficial to have a wheel, but it's better to apply the functionality of that wheel for a particular purpose because there's more to the wheel than just having it. You want to be able to use it. It is similar with a container. It's good. It's a benefit to have a container. But then let's talk about functionality. We want to use it to hold things such as food or water or consumption or utilization. There's more to it, more to the cup or container or bowl than just having it. You want to be able to use it to hold things. And then the room. Yeah, it's good to have a room, but what if you have something but don't use it, then it's the same as not having it. So the use of a room is to access its space to work to rest or otherwise serve the purpose of living. 
you may want to have things in there that you store in a room. You may want to have uh, a table uh, in there so you can get some work done. Or perhaps there's a sofa where you can hang out and rest and so on. Many different ways to utilize uh, different rooms that we have around the house. Okay, having done that, now we elevate our thinking, taking the examples cited by Laozi to look at them as aspects of our lives. So these represent different aspects, like for instance, the wheel represents transportation. We need to move around in the material world. Transportation is an important aspect in terms of functionality of our lives. Then what about the bowl or the container? We all need to consume food and drink to sustain the body. So containers are very useful to us. This is another aspect of life that's also an important functionality the sustenance to maintain our physical selves and then finally functionality of the room we need a space we need a place where we can work in a home where we can rest so buildings and rooms become crucial so here's the main point about all of these it really suggests that Lao Tzu did not come up with his examples at random not just pulling them out of whatever comes to mind it seems he meant for us to understand the examples individually and then consider them together in the context of our lives so having built that as the foundational discussion, we're now ready to go to the next level to talk about existence and emptiness. This is vertical again, but now we're dealing with the character for existence, yo, and the character for non-existence or emptiness, wu, so working vertically now. Now we can, there's a lot that we can see uh, into this. We can talk about this, starting with the concept of balance. The yin and yang symbol is often seen as a symbol for balance. And that is certainly a valid interpretation. We can and should apply the idea of balance to having versus not having, substance versus emptiness. Here's what I mean by that. First, too much substance, too many things. We get clutter and obstruction. So the whole idea that substance, meaning having stuff, creates benefits is true at the same time we also know it is possible to go overboard and have too much what happens then well the excess turns into a detriment for us this is most easily seen in clutter becoming a negative factor in life and that is because it obstructs or gets in the way of your other life functionalities. And please note, this applies not just to physical clutter that get in the way, but also mental and emotional clutter. Your mind, your emotions can be so full of things that don't serve you but drag you down, they become obstructions too. 
then the extent of their obstruction is proportional to the extent of the mental or emotional clutter. Now, what about the other side? We're talking about too much substance on the left-hand side. What about too much emptiness? So emptiness is a lack of resources. So one aspect of it is that we have nothing to work with. In this material world, we need a certain amount of resources to work with. Now, as Lao Tzu pointed out, central emptiness is crucial, like the wheel, the container, the room, but that doesn't say that even more emptiness will be better. For instance, if we have a wheel that is empty of spokes, well, it cannot function as a wheel. A room that is empty of walls cannot serve as a room at all. And in a similar way, humility, when taken to an extreme, becomes self-degradation. Even though we apply the example of the wheel and the cup to life, and we say that we should proceed with the mind, with the heart that is empty of self-centric, egocentric notions, we know it can be overdone so that humility becomes debasement. In a similar way, we want to keep an open mind, we want to be receptive, but if that is taken to an extreme, then we verge into the realm of gullibility. We become vulnerable to misinformation, erroneous information, or disinformation. So in terms of learning, if you are lacking foundational knowledge, then you have no basis to build additional understanding. So same problem. Spiritually, if you have too much emptiness there, a lack of purpose in life, you wander aimlessly, and you may not even realize the need for a direction. So there is a lot that we can say for a scenario where there's actually too much emptiness. How do we bring it back into balance? So a balanced wheel must have spokes. A balanced life must also have the spokes, your support system. And in the case of a room, the walls. The room needs the walls to be a wall at all. So we need to have our resources. We need a certain amount of substance, material things. So one important part of the Tao is the gathering of resources. This is the reason why there is nothing wrong with the acquisition of wealth in order to be for that wealth or resources to be utilized for worthwhile functionalities in life. What the sages speak against is the hoarding of wealth, the hoarding without the utilization that quickly becomes negative. And this goes back to the example in chapter nine of the Tao Te Ching that speaks to the room full of jade and treasures that you cannot prevent the loss, the damage, the theft, etc. Now, on the other side, when we talk about balance, it is equally crucial. It's not just having resources that are crucial. It's just as crucial to use what we have for optimal functionality, and ultimately, that is the Tao. And let me emphasize the right amount of emptiness. When you have balance 
in terms of emptiness? It means having the room, having the space, having the freedom in which to function, in which to explore. It creates more possibilities, therefore bringing you more experiences and more discoveries. And overall, you end up with more of an ability to make better use of your life. So this is the discussion on balance, using the yin and yang as a symbol for that. And I now would like to get to what is, in my opinion, the foremost or the most important point that Lao Tzu is making out of all these examples and extensions into real life scenarios. What is the ultimate purpose that Lao Tzu had to talk about this, to talk about Yo, Wu, existence, non-existence? So I'll start with the left-hand side, which is the yang side, the side that is visible, overt, existing. Having a physical existence by itself is a benefit to us. Or another way to say it, it's good or beneficial to have physical existence in the material world. Second point, the life that we have built in this world is what provides additional benefits. Our physical existence is what allows us to interact with one another here and now. At this moment, I am using my physical self to speak into a microphone, and the messages that I'm trying to convey from the Tao perspective is ending up in what you hear through this network that's been built. The network all over the world itself is a manifestation of existence or material things. Now, when I talk about interactions in the material world, I'm not talking about just you and I interacting, which we're doing now, but this is more than just human beings. We interact with the entire world, everything that is surrounding us, all the things that are in it, the myriad things, the pets. The pets are a quick example. It's not just fellow human beings we interact with, some of us have pets, or perhaps we visit the zoo. Our pets become part of the family. So we want to be able to have that interaction as well. It's good to exist. It's good to be alive from the perspective of us, because we are all here right now among the living. Now the important part, the emptiness. So we have talked about the functionality of a wheel. It was designed for that specific purpose of transportation. We have talked about the functionality of a bowl, a container. It was designed for the purpose of holding things. And then room, the same. It was created and built for specific purposes. So then, we want to cover this question. You exist in this world. You've been created as you were born. What were you designed to do? What functionality are you supposed to fulfill? What is your usefulness or purpose? So we want to explore emptiness in terms of functionality, in terms of utilization. And we cannot talk about emptiness without referring to the Tao itself. The Tao 
is ultimately empty. So the first point from Laozi is something that we can immediately see. He's basically saying we have to combine our material existence this lifetime with the formless Tao to do what we are designed and created to do. Just like the wheel, rolling, moving forward. And this message has a special significance to the people who have dedicated themselves to the Tao, the Tao cultivators, the Tao practitioners following a traditional path. They draw power from their center, the source of their aspiration, and they count on the support of the Tao community like the spokes of the wheel so they can turn, so they can function and share the message of the Tao to people out there who have affinity to the Tao. And one more point that uh, Lao Tzu would make is about the crucial distinction between Yo and Wu, between that which exists and that which have no physical existence. This is crucial because most people in the world are so reliant on their senses, physical senses, and therefore they understand the importance of having something, material things, substance, resources, but then they fail to understand the importance of emptiness, the room in which to utilize, the freedom in which to move. Therefore, most people tend to value the materialistic over the spiritual. You may have heard this from time to time about people who complain that how come so-and-so is so materialistic? Well, it's rather common. People also tend to value the short term over the long term. And typically for that mode of thinking, it's the short term profitability. Short term profits takes paramount importance over long term benefits or happiness or good for the group, good for the community. It is only the few and the wise who balance their perspective to value both existence and emptiness. It is only those few who optimize both the short-term and long-term benefits. And they do this not just for themselves, but also for everyone around them. So the last paragraph that I have there speaks to purpose. Your life is a blank canvas. That is, the future that is stretching out ahead of you, it is blank. Blank pages yet to be written, blank canvas yet to be painted. The question then becomes, what would you paint? What masterpiece will you create from the future of your life? So this is the overall functionality question in terms of destiny or the sacred quest, the sacred mission in life. We've asked, we've raised this question in different ways throughout this chapter. You know, what is, what is the reason for our existence? Why are we here? We know the wheel is designed to roll. The bowl is shaped to hold things. The room is built for living. So what am I built for? What is my purpose? What is my intended function? Let me share with you answers from the wisest practitioners that I have encountered in the authentic Tao tradition. They have been taught this in a tradition since ancient times. 
that talk about how you and I, all of us, were all here for two main reasons. Reason number one, personal aspiration. This is internal, this is self-driven, self-directed. Personal aspiration in terms of Dow cultivation, it means we are here to work through the many lessons that challenge us to grow, to refine ourselves, to continue perfecting and developing the spirit, to be, to become the best version of ourselves. That's the personal side, but that's just one of the two main reasons. The second of the two main reasons is externally directed. It's not just us, it's about everybody else. It's external, it's mutual assistance. That second most important reason is that we are here for one another. I'm here for you, you're here for me. None of us can succeed alone, but we can all succeed together. That is why we're all on this journey together as travel companions. Sometimes I get to lend you a helping hand, other times I need a helping hand from you. So now let's bring you home. The last two lines of this chapter, Lao Tzu wrote, therefore, that which exists is used to create benefit. That which is empty is used to create functionality. I want to conclude our discussion of this chapter with a common scenario, just to illustrate the main point. Suppose a young person, a teenager, were to ask you, what is my purpose in life? Or what am I here to do? Can we use what we have learned from this chapter, what we have talked about so far, to answer the teenager in a way that will provide guidance? So the answer, for the team is not necessarily, well, you're here to do what you're good at. And it is not necessarily, you are here to do what you enjoy doing. The two may be the same. What you're good at and what you enjoy doing may be one and the same. That's oftentimes the case. If you think about how, if you have a gift, you're good at something, you enjoy doing it, they often come together. The better answer, the answer closer to the Tao is, you are here to help yourself and other people by using what you are good at and what you enjoy. That is the second part of the two major reasons for our existence and it's tied to the first part. Of course, the teenager may tell you, well, I'm good at sports, I'm good at basketball, or whatever other sports, or I'm good at video games, and I wanna do just that for the rest of my life. And indeed, many teenagers may say exactly that, but we know there is 99.99% .99 probability that the teenager will not end up as an athlete or a professional game player. Instead, the grown-up version of this teenager may discover one day a way to be of service to other people, to do something good, something positive to contribute to the world. When that happens, the lessons that his younger self, the teenager, the lessons that he learned from sports, like teamwork, timing, strategy, the lessons he learned from video games, like exploration, looking for clues, being persistent, keep trying, build up until your character can defeat the level boss or the end boss. 
suddenly all these lessons come together. They come into play to support his actual sacred quest in life. An important mission in life that he decides to take on. So this is the Tao about living your life's purpose. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.